Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and this is actually conference week so those of you who are watching this who don't have a reservation are probably not joining us and so I just want to let you know we are going to film the uh, main sessions and there will be 11 lectures and panel discussions that we're going to film and these include um, uh, panel discussions, two panel discussions with Dr. Lim, Eileen Kopsaftis, uh, Peter Bregan, Janice Stanger, all of our speakers, uh, two panel discussions and then individual lectures on all kinds of things like mental health, musculoskeletal health, weight loss, inflammatory bowel disease, um, pregnancy and nutrition, and etc. So if you can't join us, you can watch the video version uh, just send me an email at pampopper at msn.com and we'll send you details. Now, uh, some updates in the news about things that I have covered in the past. So the first thing is, you might remember, I think it was about six or eight weeks ago, I did a video clip on the Monsanto lawsuit. Uh, you might remember the gentleman who was using Roundup as part of being a groundskeeper for a school system, developed non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which he uh, sued Monsanto because Roundup, um, alleging that Roundup uh, was the cause, and he won a damage award of $280 million dollars and I said at the time that first of all there are 5,000 other lawsuits pending so this was a good way to start out this is the first one that went to trial and it went to trial early because he was um, his life expectancy is not real long well I, I've said that I thought the damage awards would be knocked down a little bit Monsanto's going to appeal and all that so the first thing was that Monsanto asked for a new trial and a um, California judge uh, upheld the verdict and said there will not be a new trial so now they have to go through the appellate system so this is a bit of a win um, they did knock the the damage awards down from uh, 289 million to 78 million and um, it, before you get into it's not fair and all that the, the one thing I can share with you from having watched this with tobacco uh, lawsuits and so many other lawsuits and in, in my history of watching these things is that um, the first lawsuit is a learning experience the first 25 lawsuits are learning experiences Ju um, uh, trial lawyers get better at knowing how to try these cases and how to file them and that sort of thing so Monsanto is not out of the woods and and by the way the, their their issue really isn't how much gets paid on this particular lawsuit. Their issue is 5,000 other cases to follow. And this one's been upheld and, and uh, the damage award's been knocked down a little bit, but still been upheld. So anyway, I'll keep you posted on this. Good sign that they didn't throw the whole thing out and have to start all over again. I'm sure Monsanto is disappointed because that's what they wanted. They wanted the uh, they wanted a retrial and they didn't get it. So that's all good. Um, so anyway, second thing is I have written, I checked before I got online here to film this, and I have probably written three dozen uh, articles on vitamin D, and I've created a two-hour lecture with slides on vitamin D that our, some of our subscribers have access to. And so I, th I don't think there's anything else to write. It's all bad news. The people who are recommending vitamin D, it is just all bad news. So I'll just announce that a new meta-analysis of 81 randomized control trials involving over 53,000 people show that vitamin D supplements do not prevent fractures, do not increase bone mineral density, or prevent falls in adults. The researchers concluded that the clinical guidelines should be revised to discourage testing and supplementation with vitamin D. And of course, it was only a couple of weeks ago. One of the reasons I'm not even going to bother to turn this into another article, written about it a lot. Um, I did a very lengthy video clip on the fact that Dr. Michael Hollick essentially made up the epidemic of vitamin D deficiency. Uh, so hopefully you saw that. I think this should be the last time, unless something really amazing comes out that I think it's important for you all to know. I think we can stop talking about vitamin D and hopefully you've stopped taking it and you'll tell your doctor from now on uh, to stop testing for it because the tests are 60 to 80 percent inaccurate in favor of showing vitamin D deficiency. We just need to be over this already. I mean this is, this is just another one of those um, jump off the cliff, recommend something to everybody without any evidence and then later on uh, when we're crystal clear that this is a bad idea, it's just almost impossible to dial it back. But as consumers, we have to take some responsibility for that and just start saying no to a lot of this stuff. So just say no on the vitamin D issue. And for most of you, the best thing you can do is take the money that you're spending on vitamin D and put it into eating good food. That's really where, that's not where you get your vitamin D, by the way, because it's a hormone, not a vitamin, but it's where you get all the rest of your nutrients. So eat good food. 
All right, so on to the topic for this clip. Um, over half of all women will have at least one bladder infection, referred to as uncomplicated cystitis, during their lifetime, and those who have one are likely to get more of them. Symptoms include strong, persistent urge, urge to urinate, a burning sensation during urination, passing small amounts of urine, blood in the urine, and pelvic pain. Um, in addition to uncomplicated cystitis, you can have infection that, that deals with the entire, or affects the entire urinary tract. About 27% of women will have another reoccurrence of cystitis within six months. It doesn't take long to develop another one. And for women who've had a pre previous UTI, uh, between 44 and 70% of them will have a recurrence within a year. And some of the risk factors for recurrence include recent sexual intercourse, use of a diaphragm with spermicide, and a history of UTIs. That's, that's a, a major risk factor. Uh, UTIs are generally treated with antibiotics, and about 15% of all antibiotic prescriptions are written for this condition. As a result, um, it doesn't take very long for, um, the, uh, for the type of bacteria uh, that cause these types of infections to develop resistance. And so this is one of the reasons, one of the contributing reasons why women have serial UTIs is that every, you've got a couple things going on actually, the antibiotics um, will address the bacteria until the bacteria become resistant, but the antibiotics wipe out the gut microbiome, which um, is responsible in part for directing immune activity, which um, makes it easier to develop another infection. Um, there are uh, lots of ways that you can prevent uh, cystitis and, um, uh, and, and a lot of ways that, that you can prevent UTIs. Um, a couple of them that I'll mention here and then one I'll spend a little bit of time on is um, not delaying urination, urinating shortly after sexual intercourse, and better pelvic hygiene. Both oral and intravaginal support suppositories of probiotics are effective for prevention, and cranberry products have been shown to decrease recurrence of UTIs by 30 to 40 percent in premenopausal women. One of the most effective, simple, and cheapest ways to prevent this, however, is hydration. Uh, drinking enough water will flush out the bacteria in the urinary tract. And in fact, a new study just published shows that women who had at least three symptomatic episodes of cystitis during the previous year and who reported drinking less than one and a half liters of fluid daily, um, when they were randomized to either add one and a half liters of water to daily intake or just continue to drink uh, their usual one and a half liters, um, they had an almost, um, the women who didn't drink enough water had an almost two times greater risk of um, having another episode of cystitis as opposed to the women who got fully hydrated. So you can reduce your risk by half by just drinking water. And there are so many other reasons to drink water too, which I won't go into since this is basically about bladder infections and UTIs, but um, many, many reasons why drinking water is a good idea and this is one of them. Also for men as well. Um, cranberries, I'm going to come back to the issue of cranberries because they're uh, an important factor too. They contain proanthocyanidins or PACs which prevent bacteria from attaching uh, to the lining of the urinary tract. Um, one study that compared antibiotics with cranberries, um, uh, cranberry capsules, showed that the antibiotics were initially more effective, but the cranberry capsules were more effective in the long term. And one of the reasons for that was that the bacteria, like I was saying earlier, developed resistance. And so at a certain point in time, the antibiotics ceased to be effective and the cranberry capsules were effective in treating uh, cystitis. So um, cranberry uh, doesn't cause the same side effects as antibiotics and it doesn't um, destroy beneficial bacteria in the microbiome. Uh, so a few things to do if you are prone to develop um, uh, bladder or urinary tract infections. Um, the first thing is you know, urinating after intercourse, good pelvic hygiene, all those kinds of things are great. Drink enough water. Another thing is get some Lakewood cranberry juice, not from concentrate. It's so sour, it'll wrap your lips right around the bottles, but, but just live with it a little bit. And get some raw honey, which has been proven to have antibiotic properties. I mean, articles in medical journals type of evidence for honey having antibiotic properties. And drink about eight ounces of cranberry juice along with that raw honey, sweetening it up a little bit every day. Keep yourself hydrated, take a good probiotic. And um, over time, you may find yourself having fewer or no urinary tract infections or bladder infections, and most women are pretty happy to be rid of that problem. So, um, very common condition. 
lots of antibiotics prescribed, easy to prevent, easy to, easier to treat with, with uh, natural substances, and uh, get rid of the problem once and for all. All right, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you get our videos every week and stay up on the news. Um, recommend this video or pass it on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you on Thursday with more news.